Good morning. Good morning and welcome to our service today. Today is the Sunday after Pentecost, which makes it uh, Trinity Sunday, where we think about the Trinity. And the important thing about, about the Trinity is not to try and understand how it works so much as what it means. And what it means is that God is a family and that God invites us to be a part of that family. And today we welcome Luca as part of God's family as we have a ba celebrate baptism today. We are a treaty people. We give thanks to the Creator for the gifts of this beautiful planet and for the blessing of this land. We give thanks to the original peoples of Halton Hill and especially the Mississaugas of the Credit River for the stewardship of this, their traditional territory for generations. We are committed to the care of this land and to work at reconciliation with our indigenous brothers and sisters, addressing the injustices that they have suffered. We are all one people, and we are all part of one web of life upon which the whole of creation depends. Let us pray. Eternal God, you reveal yourself to us as creator, the Christ, and the Spirit. Thank you for making the world as a home for us, for sending us Jesus to show us who you are, and for the gift of the Spirit to guide us into truth. Help us to know you in all your ways and rejoice in your glory. Amen.
Good morning. Let us pray. Let us be still for a moment as we draw near to worship. And may we take just a few seconds to remind ourselves why we are gathered today. And may we listen as God speaks even through the background noise of the world around us. We meet together in the presence of a God whose love is freedom, whose touch is healing, whose voice is calm. We meet not in our own strength, but in the knowledge that God's spirit abides within us in our worship today and in our daily lives when we depart from this place. Blessed be. Amen. Jennifer's turn. <laughs> Wait for you to get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you to the trustees and congregational care and all those who helped to make last week's barbecue such a memorable and successful event. There's still time to make your anniversary Pentecost gift to the St. John's Operating Fund. Please refer to the information delivered by the Caring Circle leaders or to the weekly announcements for more information on how you can make a one-time gift or increase your monthly PAR givings. On Sunday, June 26th at 1 p.m., we will be holding a congregational meeting via Zoom. An email containing materials needed for this important meeting, along with the Zoom link, was sent out on Friday. Please take time to review these materials before the meeting, and if you have any questions, contact myself, Jennifer Cardwell, or Drew Leverett. Now it's my turn. Actually, it's Lucas' turn. This time I'd like to invite uh, the family to come forward. Luca and Francesco and the godparents. So today we're here to baptize Luca. Hi, how are you? I don't know who you are. I don't trust you. <laughs> and we all remember Francesco. Yeah. Yeah. You were here a little while ago. Look how big they've grown. <laughs> Time changes so fast. Well, today we're going to celebrate a baptism. So what we're going to do is I'm going to say a few prayers. There'll be a few words. And then we're going to pour some water into the bowl. And then I'll tell a few stories about water. And then we're going to splash your brother. How does that sound? Huh? How does that sound? Get your hair a little wet? Yeah, you got baptized out there today, maybe. Even. Yeah, a bit. Yeah. Right, so let us so. On one occasion during Jesus' time on earth, some people brought children to him to place his hands on them. But the disciples, they scolded the, the people. When Jesus noticed this, he was angry and said to his disciples, Let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I assure you that whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. 
Then he took children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. Brothers and sisters, following Christ's command and his example of welcoming children, we gather now to celebrate the gift of grace that is given to us in the sacrament of baptism. Out of the water of baptism, we rise with new life. We are forgiven and made one with Christ and members of God's family. Now I'm going to ask the parents some questions. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to ask Sybil to say something. Where is Sybil gone? Christian and Christina Massa, their family and friends, as we celebrate the baptism of their son, Luca Tommaso Mosa. We also welcome Adriana and Gianfranco Guido, who are Luca's godparents. Luca's middle name, Tommaso, is in honor of Christian's grandfather. Luca was born in July 31st, 2019, and his baptism was delayed because of the pandemic. We are very happy that we can now participate in this sacrament with the Massa family. I present Luca Tommaso Massa for baptism. As you presented your child to be baptized, will you bring him up in the and love of God, provide him a faith filled where love and forgiveness are freely shown? If so, answer, I do, God being my helper. I do, God being my helper. Will you bring him to the church? Them in the knowledge of the Christian story. If so, yes, I I would do. and family of the Church of St. John's. Do you receive this child in Christ's name, promising to create a community here that is truly welcoming? Do you promise to support this family by wholesome example, accepting love and faithful prayer? Will you support this child and uphold him and his parents in love and prayer as we all journey together in the life of faith? Sir, we will God being our help. Let us join in the affirmation of the Christian faith expressed in the new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who created and is creating, who has come in Jesus the world and make new, who works by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to, church, to celebrate God's presence with in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice, resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. God is with you and also with me. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Francesco, do you want to help me out? No? Come on, you want to, do you want to pour the water into the bowl? That's a great idea. Okay, can you do that? Whoa, look at that. You want to put water in too? You can. Here, you want to do it too? Here, why don't you do it too? Might as well participate in your own thing here. I know that. There you go. Whoa, look at that. Now I get to play in the water. How's that sound? <laughs> so there's lots of stories of water in the Bible. The first story about water is how God made the world, and the world was covered with water. And out of the water, he brought forth the, the lands and the peoples and everything that we see today. Then there's another story about the time when everything kind of went wrong and God had to wash the earth. And that's the story of the flood. And again, God saved Noah and his family through the waters and brought them safely to land. And then the next story is Jesus' own baptism. 
And so Jesus came to the water where John the Baptist was, and he says, I need to be baptized. And John said, okay, let's get you baptized then. And so Jesus went under the water, and then when he came out of the water, there was a big voice, and the voice said, this is my child. This is my beloved child. And we remember every time when we baptize someone, God is saying to Francesco and to Thomas, Luca, (laughs) it's the second name that got me this time, uh, that this is my child, and I love him, and I'm going to take care of him. And so that's why we baptize today, to remind us that everyone is part of God's family. And so let us pray. As you did with Jesus, Lord God, so open the heavens for Luca and pour out your spirit upon him, that he and all who are here baptized may know themselves as loved by you, cleansed by this water, and having a new life. To you be given praise and honor through Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I bet you, do you want to stick your hand in here too? You want to bless the water? No? All right, that's fine. Oh, there we go. There you go. See, you got an extra blessing today. Okay. Now what we're going to do is you're going to tip over a bit. All right. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to splash some water on your head. Okay. Luke, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think you're wet enough, huh? (laughs) There we go. Let's dry you off a bit. There you are. Excellent. Thank you. All right, let's pray. Loving, caring God, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from all that constrains us from knowing and following you, and for raising us up to new life through the gift of baptism. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Luca, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and awe of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. We also pray that you would be with the parents of Luca. Let them rejoice in the gift that you've given them, strengthen them in their own faith, and may they be teachers and positive examples for each of their children. Amen. Do we have, yeah, Sybil's turn again. Next slide. You don't have to stand, actually. (laughs) Okay, let's all say this together. We welcome you into the Lord's family of faith, and we look forward to walking and working together as God's children and sharing in the blessings of God's kingdom. And now we'll sing a blessing. You can go back and sit down.
This morning I'm reading selected passages from chapter 8 in, the, in Proverbs. Uh, and in this passage, we're looking at wisdom as a person. Listen. Does not wisdom call, and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portals, she cries out, To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. The Lord created me. At the beginnings of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at the first before the beginnings of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water. Before the mountains had been shaped. Before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earths and fields or the world's first bits of soil. When he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he made firm the skies above. When he established the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then... I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. And now reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. This is called The Results of Justification. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character. And character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Thus these words to our understanding and use. Thank you. So we heard the story of wisdom, we're in the middle of Trinity Sunday, and uh, so our thoughts are around what, like I said, the, this idea of who God is and what God provides us. And like I said, that, that the symbol of the Trinity is, you know, complicated, and you can probably spend your lifetime trying to figure out what all those Greek gods were saying, but the essential message of it is, is that God begins as a family. From the very beginning, the idea that there's a circle of hope and love and peace to which we are invited to be a part. That's the message. And it's interesting, you know, nowadays we have a lot of great ideas that, you know, we understand things like uh, equality and egal egalitarian. <laughs> I have to close one eye to say that word. Uh, and uh, we understand things like consensus building. But, you know, back when this idea of the Trinity began, they didn't have all these ideas. It certainly wasn't a, a sort of standard part of that world. They were much more a hierarchical world, a patriarchal world. And so they, you know, had to explain these ideas in some way. How you can all be equal and how you can all be in agreement together without anyone being in charge or taking over. That's a pretty tough concept, especially for people from that time. It's a pretty tough concept for us today. But that's essentially what that message of the Trinity is. This idea of co-sharing, of being equal, of, of working together as one. And just as God works together in one as a family or a community, God calls us to be 
that works together and as one, that hopes together as one. And it's not that, you know, we're taken out of the world or that we, we aren't going to struggle, but rather as a community and as part of the community of the Trinity, we have uh, a source to help us in our struggles so that we aren't seeing struggles as the end, but a beginning. And so that's what Paul talks about. He says, you know, you struggle, but you learn from your struggles. And as you learn from your struggles, the next time you go through something, you have a little more hope. And the more you go through, the more hope you have, and the more you know, and the more you uh, have to, to understand your own life. That's what life of faith is about. Now, baptism is a gift. This is the, that time where God gifts us with something. So, anyone want to guess what happened when uh, Luca and uh, Francesco got their gifts? Anyone want to hazard a guess what just happened? Do you think they put them under their seat and hid them? <laughs> they opened them up right away, exactly. That's what gifts are for, right? To open them up right away. And if you don't open up, you know, if you, if you put a gift you put a gift away, then what's the point of the gift, right? If you don't use it. I mean, how many of you still have wedding gifts in the closet somewhere? <laughs> right? You use them. Another example. How many of you know what to do with a blank check? <laughs> you fill it out and take it to the bank. You don't hide it under the mattress. Well, that's what's happened today. In baptism, God gives us this gift. says, I'm here for you. All you have to do is open my gift. All you have to do is start using the gift that I've given you. And it's not like Luca and, and Francesco's gift where you can start using it right away. It's something that we need to learn how to use. And that's where wisdom comes in. That's where learning about the stories of God and how Jesus lived in the world and then learning how to bring those things to start signing each check, if you like, to bring those things into our lives to make a difference in our lives so that our lives can be blessed, but more so that our lives can be a blessing. Because you see, when we go through struggles and we overcome them, that learning can be then shared with others who are also going through struggle, struggles. It's that God teaches us in the Bible about people going through struggles, and that's what the Bible is. It's a, story, it's a big book of stories of people who are struggling and how they overcame those struggles. And so we can give others hope through our own stories and through the stories that we share in the Bible, and that that is what wisdom is all about. And so wisdom has there been there from the beginning, helping God to create, helping us to be co-creators in life and making a difference in the world. So as uh, Francesco and Luca open their gifts, let's also think about how are we opening our gifts, the gift of God's presence, the gift of God's spirit in our lives, the gift of God that says to us, you my beloved child, in whom I am well pleased. Think about that. You are my beloved child. Each one of us is a beloved child of God that God is pleased with. We may not like ourselves. Others may not like us. But God likes us. Not just loves us, but God likes us. That is a gift that we can carry throughout our lives because there's always doubts, right? We all go through those times. But to know that there's a God who loves us and that likes us and accepts us, that's a beautiful gift for each one of us. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving God, we do give you thanks that you invite us to your family circle, that you want us to make part, us part of your family, that you are always reaching out to us in every moment of our lives, saying, here am I. Help us to receive this with an open heart. Help us to be mindful of this no matter where we are or what we're going through that you are with us, that you love us, you like us, and you are pleased with us. We pray for our world, that we would see more and more how we are all a family, that we are all equal, and that we all deserve love and respect. Help us to convince those who see the world differently that the way through true, to true peace it's through that love and respect, through that sharing of resources, through that gift of equality. We give you thanks for this beautiful planet upon which we live and the blessings that surround us, for the sunshine and the rain, for the green that's growing, for the changing times. Help us to be caring of this planet and love it as you love it. We pray for those who continue to be on the front lines of the pandemic, for those who are working to keep people safe, for those who are bringing healing to those who are sick. May your love surround them, even as our prayers surround them now. We pray for those of our church family and, and wider who are going through difficult times. We pray for Tony and his family on the death of his mother. We pray for Herta, Ken, Carla, Ellie, Danya, Gwen, Betty, Josh, Val, Rena and Ray, Jerry, Christine and Rob as well as those whom we name in our hearts. May they know the support of love that enfolds them from those around them. Grant them wisdom and understanding to all their caregivers. We give you thanks for the blessing of welcoming Luca into the church family. We thank you for the blessing of everyone gathered here and those at home. May the light of creation shine upon us, and may its light within us guide us. May we continue to grow in the awareness of the profound depth of love that surrounds and supports us and the whole of creation. May we be blessed, encouraged, and empowered in every aspect of our lives. Hear our prayers with the prayers of your whole creation through Christ, our companion on the way as we walk and pray in the spirit of St. Francis. As I live every day, I want to be a channel for peace. May I bring love where there is hatred and healing where there is hurt, joy where there is sadness and hope where there is fear. I pray that I may always try to understand and comfort other people as well as seeking comfort and understanding from them. Wherever possible, May I choose to be a light in the darkness, a help in times of need, and a caring, honest friend. And may justice, kindness, and peace flow from my heart forever. Amen.
Well, as we leave this place, we know that we are surrounded by that love of God, that God's love dwells within each one of us, and we just have to open up our minds and hearts to receive it. That the Spirit also dwells within us to empower us and encourage us, and we have Jesus as a guide and friend. Amen. Amen.